Thanks for listening to the Tech Tools for Teachers podcast, where each week we talk about a free piece or two of technology that you can use in your classroom. I'm your host, Shanna Martin. I'm a middle school teacher, technology coach, and personalized learning coordinator for my district. And I'm her producer and husband, Fuzz Martin. I feel like that should be changed slightly. It could be like, and... Like my name shouldn't be Fuzz anymore since my hair is so long (laughs) that I um, don't look fuzzy anymore. I look flowy. Yeah, we can start calling you Flow. (laughs) Start calling me Flow. (laughs) It's kind of crazy. This joke is progressively getting worse. It's getting bad. Oh, (laughs) Yeah. A lot of quality time together. (laughs) My dad joke uh, perfection skills have gotten really good. Yes. You've upped your game with your dad jokes, that's for sure. Is it really upping your game with dad jokes, though? Well, it's entertainment for all, I suppose. It is. So, speaking of dad jokes... Yes? We're on episode 56. We are. Holy cow. Holy cats, man. Holy cats. And we've been spending a lot of time with our family. We have. So, I figured it would be... A great theme and applicable to many if our theme this week is learning with the fam learning with the fam which is you know i mean i was thinking oh well it's it's as a teacher and educator you can share these sites with your students and there's mm-hmm. cool things you can do with them or you can just encourage families to check them out and try some activities on their own maybe take a break from the day-to-day and go check out and explore these sites together or um like students can explore them during the day and then share some information with their families at night Mm -hmm. or kind of make it into a a group project like a week long like bits and pieces there i don't know as a staff we've been talking a lot about changing things up we're on week how many how long have we been shut down i think this This is is going to be going to be week six six. yeah this is the start of week six and so we're all kind of like We need to switch it up just because it gets Mm -hmm. kind of mundane. So I was trying to bring some fun sites in that kind of jazz things up. They're fun to do. Families can do them together. Students can definitely do them on their own. And some of them even, they're meant, they're skewed a little bit older. So um, parents could just go check them out too without their kids. It's totally fine. Um, So learning with the fam. Um, The first site we're going to talk about is called the Great Plant Escape. So what's cool about this site, I always, I always like sites that are, I mean, they're a little off. They're not big branded, you know. Yeah, it's like, it looks like it was put together. Yeah. Organically. Correct. <laughs> and um, it was created by University of Illinois. That's the University of Illinois Extension. A little nod to my past. I didn't go there. You didn't go I, there. You I didn't go there. I lived you in Illinois. lived in Illinois. I lots of friends that went there, though. <laughs> um, and so the Great Plant Escape is a site that has been created. And mind you, it's won, like, honors and awards. And it's mysteries based around plant life. Okay. Which is seems yeah. odd. Mm-hmm. But what's fun about it is you mm-hmm. have, there's, like, case numbers across the top. So you just literally, okay, so it's web.extension.com. Illinois dot edu slash gpe slash gpe dot html. So we'll just put the link to this on the website. All right, gpe great plant escape is right. the uh, what that P- stands yes. for. Yes, gpe. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um. So what's fun is so you go to the site and then you can pick. And I appreciate that it's both in English and in Spanish. Mm-hmm. And um, you click, like, case one, your mission. De- Detective LaPlante needs you to help solve a mystery of plant life. But what's cool about it is you go to case brief and literally gives you goals, ideas, like projects you can do. So you could walk through this with a family. They could be planting, kids could be planting seeds in dirt grass, you know, go out in the lawn, mm-hmm. do something. But then also there's, like, facts of the case. These are, like, air quotes that nobody can see. Um, and it talks like plant structure. Then it goes through all the different vocabulary and things that you would need to know about plant structure. Then it goes through um, life cycle of a plant, the difference between annuals and perennials and biannuals. And then it goes through like parts of plants. And then it goes through parts like stems. Anyway, it goes through all the parts. So 
each of these lays out all the things you need to know about plant life. So you're learning all this information. Then it gives you a mission. So your hands are going to get dirty. Now we're going to teach you about soil. So then your mission is the next one is to learn all about soil. And the next case is going to, and they have, oh, they have really good dad jokes across the top. Like soiled again. <laughs> <laughs> is it dust, dirt, dandruff, or seed? So like there's fun little things in there. But it teaches you all about plant life in these little like cases. Mm -hmm. And then they have these little mysteries <clears> that go <throat> with it. And then there's also activities. So across the bottom, you get your, your case brief, which is your background information. They list out facts for you. And then they give you activities and you can click on those and you can create those. And kids could do them as projects if you want them to. Or you can encourage families if you say you're going to take a, a week off from the day to day and and this is all set up for you so as a family as a parent you could say hey we're gonna do some exploring as a family this week you do the research then as a family we'll go plant our garden because we're kind of at the it's still kind yeah. of cold here in wisconsin but we're at the point where we're digging in the dirt and getting outside more um so there's a lot of different ways you could use this site and i just appreciate because it's more homegrown-y than others, but there's so much information here, and it's very user-friendly, and it's fun to kind of check out. So if you get a chance or you want to try out something kind of fun, a little different, The Great Plant Escape, um, I would encourage you to check it out and try it out because it's fun. And there is a teacher's guide, too, so you could use this, you know, when you go back to classroom. Yep. Or in your in your digital classroom, but... Anyway, so that's all there, too. So check it out. Great Plantscape. Go plant yourself a garden. Make some vegetables. Do it. Flowers today. We put some um, the smallest <laughs> decided. No, no, no. Let's go take it back. So our bird feeders have seed in them. Yes. We have lots of birds. And the youngest saw me getting some of my planters ready. Not, not actually planting yet, just taking things out. And you thought it would be a great idea to give her some bird seed to go plant in my vegetable garden. Well, <laughs> I was so trying to walking, distract her from you. So she's walking around with a handful of sunflower seeds. Yes. And she went and planted them in my vegetable garden. <laughs> yes. Um, she had her little her little spade. And uh, so the funny thing was you didn't get a chance to see over there. So uh, no, she, um, I didn't. she was sticking her finger in the ground and then putting the seed in there. And then taking the shovel and scooping dirt on it. I'm like, oh, why don't you just like scoop a little hole and drop the seed in? And she's like, no, people use their fingers. <laughs> I'm like, okay. <"Go laughs> so I got a gardening lesson from the little one today. Yes. And now you're going to have sunflowers in your vegetable garden. Congratulations. <laughs> it's fine. It's not a very serious vegetable garden. No. It's. And it'll be overrun garden. by zucchini by the time. Yes, uh, I plant one zucchini seed usually, and the whole thing is just like giant zucchini. And I get like one pepper off the whole thing. So yeah, it's totally fine. It's our, it's our family vegetable. Garden. Yes, it is a square foot gardening, which is another mm -hmm. fun thing you can do with your kids. Mm -hmm. Look up square foot gardening. That'd be a, a good if you've got, uh, if you've got some, you know, a little bit of property at your house. Mm -hmm. Um be a good little was it three feet by three feet yeah I think. yeah yeah it's a little square it's a little square and it will fit one zucchini plant and one pepper plant mm -hmm. i mean if you do it right you can definitely do it successfully i don't because i put a zucchini in there and i Correct. don't think that you should put a zucchini in your square foot no bread. no pumpkins no <laughs> zucchini <laughs> but you know how much zucchini bread i got my zucchini plants and, yeah <laughs> i agree all right so anyway as we digress um so the next site it's still sciencey but different. Mm -hmm. It's called Amazing Space. This one is actually amazingspace.org. So nice, nice and easy. It is nice and easy. Um, it's a space telescope, space telescope education program. <laughs> uh, what's cool about it, though? So there's like the usual educators, like resources, all like homework help. They have all kinds of cool like resources here. So it's a great resource site. But then as I was going through it too, it's one of those that it kind of draws. The, the the cruiser through it it, it draws you in when you start looking at it so like resources by topic so if you are interested in and it's all things space so like gravity you click on the little gravity bubble then they talk about planet impact and there's um you can try it out and there's different activities that go with each um uh 
each different topic. Mm -hmm. So there is like slideshows that go through them. There is um, games that go with them. There's videos that go with them. There's flashcards that go. So what's kind of cool is it definitely allows the user to explore a lot of different topics um, from history of science and comets and asteroids and stars and um, the solar system and electromagnetic spectral light and color. There's a lot of prism talk in this in our house, too. I found one of my prisms was found when we cleaned the basement. So then <laughs> there's a lot of flashlights and prisms going on. Um, but it's just kind of neat. They have um, how like color is created or how it catches your eye. They have online explorations. They have, you know, pictures. They have... Um, galleries that you can zoom in on light and different spectrum it's just very cool so this site is a great way to explore different topics connected to space mm -hmm. um and it could start a project or it could just be a fun cool thing like hey why don't you explore this topic click through here there's a bunch of different activities you can do um they call them online explorations you do need flash player just be aware of that yeah. um and there's like flashcards and then as teachers there are activities set up so if you want to do it a little more formally and base a lesson around it or base like a little mini unit around it you could um and i know right now there's a lot of talk of how the world is changing um from like nasa and space you mm -hmm. can see more the atmosphere is changing so there's just a lot of cool things that you can explore on that site and it's very user friendly and again you could put kids on it you could put families on it um it's just it's cool to check out and the pictures are really pretty so um you could even like pick some of them and do journal topics around it if you wanted to so that is amazing space i'm learning about black holes right now <laughs> <laughs> you look very intent on what you're yeah, reading yep so what have you learned about black holes um the event horizon is the the threshold which when something crosses into it never seen again hmm, look at that even light the fastest known particles in the universe. Cool. Look at that. See? Families learning about science. Yeah. Cool. That's why it's learning with the family. Science. So now you can teach everybody about black holes. So next site. I'm starting a new podcast specifically about <laughs> black holes. Based on what I learned on AmazingSpace.org. Yes. So next site is um, Nat Geo Kids. Which I, I've, taught, I've talked about different Nat Geo sites, but National Geographic has about 12,000 different mm -hmm. sites for different things. Yeah. So Nat Geo Kids is Nat National Geographic Kids. However, the site <clears throat> itself is kids.nationalgeographic.com. So just be aware. Um, and they do a beautiful job with their website. So this is definitely one that's very kid friendly. So yeah. if you've got a work meeting and the kids need to explore something and you want them to learn a little bit or have them report out, I've heard a lot of families doing like, okay, learn something new and then create a slideshow and teach it to the family after dinner tonight or like mm -hmm. fun activities. Um, the girls made a board game at our house randomly because they were practicing stuff with dice and made facts and you, yeah. I don't know, they, whatever. But this site is very kid-friendly, so if you want to have the kids be immersed in something educational for a while, um, they have topics. So if you like, so across the top, you have options for games. Um, they have quizzes, personality quizzes, action, funny villain things. They have videos specific to animals, weird but true, which are those really cool books that always have those fun, strange facts. Like that's yeah. not really true, mm -hmm. and. Um, we do the National Geographic um, B at our school, and they have a section in the GOB that's weird but true. Did you know weird but true? And they have these mm. weird facts. Um, party animals, and then um, try this videos, so you can click on those. They have animals, so of course, they have them all by topic, from prehistoric to invertebrates to amphibians. They have explore, and um, they can go through the United States. Um, kids versus plastic, they have stuff. Um, they have different countries you can learn about. They have photos for all these things. So there's just a ton of cool things to see. Um, they even have a large section on national parks. It's like right on the, the cover, the cover, the homepage. <laughs> they talk about Denali National Park. They go through like maps and like where it's located and what's going on there. Um, 
You can take the National Parks personality quiz. <laughs> um, so there's just a lot of fun, engaging things that will keep kids busy, but also like families could kind of explore together or maybe plan your first trip outside when we can travel again, um, you know, do something like that. But there's just a lot of options and a lot of interactive elements to this that are fun and for quite a few ages. So it's definitely if your kids are able to function on like a Chromebook or an iPad, you know, yeah. com- comfortably, um, they would be able to be able to function on the site. So Nat Geo Kids, definitely I'm engaging the, and fun. I'm taking the nerd A to Z personality <laughs> quiz right now. Oh, good. If I could go anywhere on vacation, where would it be? What are your choices? There's a whole bunch. The Galapagos Islands, Tokyo, Taj Mahal, Mount Kilimanjaro, Los Angeles, Stonehenge. Hmm. Hmm. Galapagos Islands. Really? Dream home. High tech. <laughs> uh, I'll How many questions does this quiz? Ten. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we can move on to the next one and I'll tell you what I am. Okay, perfect. Yes. So the next site, while well, Fuzz is taking his personality quiz, is called Young Ocean Explorers. Um, the youngest in our house currently is obsessed with otters. Mm-hmm. And um, after she does her schoolwork, her little, and she's in 4K, so after she does her little schoolwork each day, she gets to watch an otter video. She's obsessed with Hardy, this little otter. It's like a two-minute video when he was rescued. So I was looking up ocean things for her. And I found this, which is Young Ocean Explorers. And this site, you can sign in and like sign up and have your own sign up. But you can access most of the stuff without signing up for anything, which is (laughs) if I can not sign up, I try not to. Yeah. yeah. Um, And so if you go to their homepage, so it's youngoceanexplorers.com. And there's all kinds of cool topics. So they've got turtles and sharks and dolphins. Oh, my. Things I cannot pronounce because there are places in the world I don't know about. And reefs and like stop plastic from getting in the oceans. And what do turtles use their flippers for? And seabirds and whales. And they have quizzes. So you can take another quiz. Um, and all kinds of cool things. So I'm going to click on sharks. What did you, what was your? I'm the culture king. I'm up to date on the latest things. And... <laughs> it's all those TikTok videos. Yeah. It so, <laughs> it's true. So, so I clicked on sharks. If you go under any of the topics, they have cool videos and information. And so the first one, like, learn to draw a great white shark. And you click on it, and the video shows you how to draw a shark. Oh, that's like, cool. So it's not just... Like, learning about the, the Yeah, like there's, like, there's activities and... to do with it, which to me right now is... We're not just about learning, but what are cool things you can do. Learn how to play music by the 80s rock band Great White. Oh, yeah. That's not on there, but (laughs) there you go. Um, So, uh, like, talks about the food chain. What is zooplankton? And you click on it, you can take the quiz and and learn information. So it's very interactive. What's cool is there's also on each of these tabs, when you're learning about something, they have a map of where it's located in the world, which to me is always helpful because I'm reading about something like, yeah, that's so cool. I have no idea where it Mm -hmm. actually is. And then they also have a section that says words where the bigger vocab they have the definitions for. So in the video, you can watch it and then like words, so vocab that would be in it, offshore, upwelling, zooplankton, photoplankton, microscopic, marlin. So bigger words that kids may not know, they do have the explanations for them, which is really cool. So if you've got someone in your house or if you want to learn more about the ocean or you could wish that you were swimming in the ocean right now... (laughs) um, this site is just very graphic and there's great pictures and again a lot of interactivity which would be cool um you could even do you know like family trivia and the kids could be cranking out some trivia cards during the day or create a kahoot based on one of these or something like that sure um there's a lot of options so it's all about the ocean and there's a lot of cool things um that they have to offer here that you can check out and play around with. Cool. YoungOceanExplorers.com. Correct. And our fifth site, because I thought we needed to do six today, because why not? Sure. Um, so this site, I in my brain, I used it a little bit before with my middle schoolers. I was like, oh, yeah, this site would be cool for kind of middle school on up. But really, 
Middle school and up can definitely use the site. But parents, mm-hmm. if you a or adults, I should say, you don't have to be a parent. Adults, anyone over the age of eighteen, or anybody between twelve and eighteen, or you know, a hundred, <laughs> anybody can use the site that's older. I mean, let me just. <laughs> <laughs> it's not meant for little ones. How do I say that? Good. Yep. It's how stuff works. Yes. Which seems really. Like those books. I don't know if you've read How Stuff Works books. I have, yeah. But holy cow, is this loaded with information. And that's why I say, like, think about adults. Because you can click on Home and Garden. If you click on that tab, you have all kinds of things. Like how to unshrink your clothes. (laughs) How often should you clean your humidifier? How often should you wash your bed sheets? Uh, Like, (laughs) So we're supposed to clean our... (laughs) Oh, our humidifier, not our dehumidifier. Correct. Okay. Humidifier, yes. Okay. Health. <laughs> they have health sections. So while kids can explore this for definitely a lot of information, some yep. of it might be written at kind of a higher level. But um, like things that you never knew about, you can research. And there's bizarre topics too, like vampire facials may be bloody bad for you. Um, that's an interesting <laughs> you topic. You don't say... Um, nail polish with a boring name just isn't the same. It doesn't sell as well. Oh, it's yeah. got boring names. So you could Red. just, you could just, as an adult, again, because some of the topics are definitely like way over kids' heads or just not, yeah. wouldn't be appropriate, I guess. Um, but there's so many cool things that you can explore and learn about that if you're just trolling the internet and... Like, I'm sick of looking at the same five mm-hmm. memes all of the time. And you might want to learn something for 15, 20 minutes. The House Stuff's work site is super cool. Like, you can learn a bunch of random knowledge. Yeah. And then just maybe create memes about random knowledge. And there you go. There's your whole afternoon of learning and creating. Yeah, once. cool. Yeah, that would that'd be... I'd, I'd, I'm waiting for you to like spew out some random fact here because I fear that you were trolling as I was talking. Oh no, I don't have one. Oh, I'm okay. sorry. That's fine. That's totally fine. You took quizzes. We're good. <laughs> we'll learn about wellness and skincare diseases. Um, the dentist. Anyway, so cool things. How stuff works explains literally how stuff works. Um, and maybe if you're looking at a Pinterest project, so you want some home and garden mm-hmm. ideas, they might tell you if it will work or not. Epic fail. <laughs> and our last site. The I'm site. Saving this to the end. Because currently, this is the <laughs> world that our household is living in. Yes. So I have always been a fan of Harry Potter. Mm hmm. I decided that the youngest in our house, who is four and a half now, needed the picture Harry Potter books. Like the real books, but they have like the pretty artist drawings. I bought it for her last year. She's never looked at it until last week. And I am now on book three of the Harry Potter series because she is obsessed with Harry Potter. (laughs) She absolutely is. (laughs) And I do, I I mean, she's young. So I read them. I edit things like, oh, so-and-so got injured because we're not going to kill off so many people. So I was like, they got hurt or they got injured. So I, I do edit as I read. I don't take out things like i read the whole book but i do edit as i read one, one of these years she's going to um read them on her own and she's gonna be yeah like, i thought this person was just hurt yeah well that's fine she can handle that when she's older yeah. um and i sewed her a sort a sorting hat this week so she now has a sorting hat so anyway there's a lot of harry potter obsession in the house so when i was digging through fun family things i was like well we have to throw some harry potter in there and lo and behold if you haven't already seen this um J.K. Rowling decided that she released this. I'm trying to think how long it was, like maybe three weeks ago, four weeks ago. When we all started going into lockdown, I yep. think she released <laughs> this. So the wizardingworld.com has always had the website. But they have made a whole section of it called Harry Potter at Home. And the whole thing is cool Harry Potter stuff to do while you're stuck at home. So the site itself, it's wizardingworld.com, which already exists, mm-hmm. slash collections, slash Harry hyphen Potter hyphen at hyphen home. We'll <laughs> okay. put the link yeah, in there. Yeah, the link will be on the website. So, or if you just like Google Wizarding World Harry Potter at home. So okay. what they have done 
is they put together like this hub of cool, magical articles, quizzes, puzzles. Mm-hmm. Um, to what well, they say, we're casting a banishing charm on boredom. So the whole thing has been based around activities to do. Either some of them are alone or some of them are with their family at home. Um, so how to cast a spell over everyday games. So forget wizarding chess. They take games that you already play in your house and then they put a Harry Potter spit on them. Okay. Um, they have a whole section on making a scrapbook of Harry Potter characters. Um, finding fantastic facts about Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, which if you don't know, it's the Sorcerer's Stone, same book, different release. Um, and so there's cool um, facts about that, about the book. Um, learn from your friends and discover various different things. Um, there's just so many options. Um, they have, and we were going through this earlier, um, how to have a, the ultimate cozy experience reading a <laughs> Harry Potter and they show you how to like, set up your room, um, who's who with characters, and then um, just making cool interactive things. So then they have a whole section on crafts. So it's like Harry Potter crafting. They have, um, which of course the second she saw it, she's like, we need to make it. It's a folding paper, like red paper to make your own howler. So then you can make a howler, if you know what that is. It's like when you get this like red message from your parents and they're screaming at you because you did something oh, wrong. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it shreds itself and like catches on fire. Mm-hmm. So you can make your own howler at home. So they have a whole section on crafting. They have the first year muggle quiz. So like how much do you really know about Harry Potter? They have even like a Harry Potter word search. Um, and then they have sections like first year readers, crafting magic, first year challenges, quizzes and puzzles. So there's just so many cool interactive elements that you could do. Like if your kids are into Harry Potter, they could do it. As a family, you could do it. Uh, If you're going to read Harry Potter, you can kind of set yourselves up a little bit. Um, And then again, there's quizzes for like Quidditch and first year of magic, if you know enough information and um, silliest words on Harry Potter. So I'm taking just... a Harry Potter quiz. <laughs> Are you really? <laughs> yeah. What is Professor Dumb- Dumbledore's favorite muggle sweet? A, he hates sweets. B, wine gums. C, lemon sherbet. Or D, sherbet dib dabs. Dib- lemon sherbet. Okay. Let's see here. Okay. How many questions are in this quiz? Ten. Last one here. <laughs> okay. Um, what is Hagrid's muggle motorbike do that is magical um uh, it flies mm-hmm. oh, i only got 70 percent oh sad man i am wand erful <laughs> <laughs> puns thanks jj rowling nice so anyway if you get a chance and you have jk rowling jj rowling is <laughs> JK rowling, her yes. sister <laughs> so if you have any sort of interest in harry potter at all is it rolling? Rolling. Ro- rolling. 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 I don't know. Okay. Go to Harry Potter at home, and it has gobs of fun and entertainment that you can spend hours or minutes doing, depending on what kind of time you have. Right now, I think we have all the time in the world. Yeah. If you just go to wizardingworld.com, it's the first thing up on the that site now. Click into without yeah. getting into the wizarding world. Um, so yeah, so I understand like we're all pretty busy with our work days and everyone's balancing everything, but this is kind of a little break in that. If you can have your kids do some tasks during the day and then come back together as a family, um, it might be kind of fun to check out some of these sites. And clearly the quizzes are the highlights of some of these. I'm telling you, (laughs) it's great. Great fun. Cool. Well, on that note. I hope everyone is safe and healthy. And thanks for tuning in. This has been the Tech Tools for Teachers podcast. If you ever have any questions, you can find me on Twitter at SmartNWI. And if you want to get more information on the links to the technology discussed in this episode, you can visit SmartNWI.com, that EdTech directory, or check me out on Facebook. New episodes each week. Thanks for listening. Go educate and innovate. The ideas and opinions expressed on this podcast and the Smart NWI website are those of the author, Shanna Martin, and not of her employer. Prior to using any of the technologies discussed on this podcast, 
please consult with your employer regulations. This podcast offers no guarantee that these tools will work for you as described, but we hope they do. Thanks for listening. We'll talk to you again soon.